Hi, this is Dina Rich, Broker Associate at Keller Williams Realty on sunny South Padre Island. Welcome to The Buying Process, a five-part video series in which we will walk through the steps that will take you from tourist to property owner. In part four, we'll discuss all of the things that need to happen as we move from contract to closing. Part four, under contract. The seller has accepted your offer. Congratulations. Now what? When all the parties have come to an agreement and have signed all the pages of the contract, we now have what is called an executed contract. The day on which the last party signs and communicates to the other party that they've signed is called the effective date. When counting contract days, the effective date is day zero. The first thing you want to do is to get your earnest money and option fee to the title company. The most efficient way to do this is probably through a wire transfer. The earnest money and option fee are due within three days of the effective date. So if the effective date is Monday, August 8th, the earnest money and option fee would be due by Thursday, August 11th. However, if the effective date is Wednesday, August 10th, the third day would fall on a non-business day. So the funds would be due on the next business day, which in this case would be Monday, August 15th. If you are applying for a loan, you want to get a copy of the executed contract to your lender as soon as possible. We also want to schedule the inspection right away so that it can be completed and you can review the report before the end of your option or termination period. Let's briefly discuss inspection expectations. The inspection report is meant to be informational for you. Do not expect the seller to make any repairs. We can ask, but they're not required to do so. The inspection report is not a honeydew list for the seller. We want to look for issues with big ticket expensive items, such as the AC system or the roof, etc. A certain amount of wear and tear should be expected, and many of the items on the report will be small items. Note that inspectors are required to list certain defects in their report. These deficiencies may not have been considered deficiencies according to the building codes at the time when the property was built. Some of these items have been grandfathered in, and some have always existed since the time of construction. So what actions can you take if there are items on the inspection report that are of major concern to you? You can ask the sellers to make the repairs. This is not recommended, as the seller could get his brother-in-law and a roll of duct tape and tell you that it's fixed. You could ask the seller to have a licensed contractor or service person make the repairs, but that means that the seller gets to choose who that person will be. A better solution is to ask the seller for a credit at closing or renegotiate the sales price. And with the extra money, you can hire the contractor or service person of your choice. Remember that the seller is not obligated to make repairs, give a credit, or change the sales price. Some sellers may be willing while others will not be. If an agreement cannot be reached and you cannot overcome your concern about the inspection report issues, you can terminate the contract as long as your option period has not expired. Other documents that are part of the closing process are condo declaration and bylaws or subdivision information, the resale certificate. This document verifies the HOA fees, notifies you of possible upcoming assessments, and provides copies of the HOA's budget, profit and loss, and insurance. In the seller's disclosure, the seller notifies you of any issues that they are aware of on the property, to the best of their knowledge, during the time that they've owned the property. This document is not required for foreclosures or estate sales. You'll have the opportunity to review the title commitment. 
This will show any liens against the property. And the title company will work with the sellers to remove these liens before closing. For single family homes, townhomes, and vacant lots, you will also receive a copy of the survey. With each of these documents, there is a review period and you can object to them and terminate the contract if needed. Throughout this process, if you are obtaining financing, you will continue to work with your lender. Once you've been given conditional approval, the appraisal will be ordered, and also the property will need to satisfy the lender. If the property is a condominium, your lender may send a condo questionnaire to the HOA so they can better understand the operations of the HOA. Finally, you will hopefully obtain final approval and clear to close. Although the lender may have issued you a pre-qualification or pre-approval letter before you began your property search, the underwriters will run a last minute credit check on your finances before issuing the final approval. So these are the things that you don't want to do while you are under contract for a property. As we get closer to closing, there are a few more decisions you will need to make. You will most likely want to have insurance on the property. If you're obtaining a loan, your lender will require you to do so. If you're purchasing a condominium, some of your insurance needs will be satisfied by the HOA, but others will be your responsibility. I can put you in touch with insurance agents who can clarify this for you. Even if you did not ask the seller to provide you with a home warranty or residential service contract, you can choose to purchase one on your own. You'll want to set up utility services. If you're purchasing a condo, some of the utilities are provided by the HOA. I will provide you with detailed instructions on how to do this. If the property has been in a rental program, and if there are rentals scheduled in the future, you'll need to decide if you want to honor the existing rentals. If so, you'll need to make arrangements for the transfer of these rentals through the rental management company. I can put you in touch with the existing rental company who can assist you. You can choose or decline to do a final walkthrough of the property. This can be done in person or virtually. That brings us to the end of part four of the buying process. In the final video segment, we will talk about what to expect on closing day.